I'd, I'd been filming um, on tour. I got the camera for Christmas while we were on tour and um, for Live Through This. And I decided to document all the places I was going in the shows. So, um, you know, I, I, everyone else was documenting in their own way. Like Melissa would journal every night. And so and Eric would would journal and Melissa would take photos. And, and so I'm not much of a writer, so I would just film everything. And so I had all these uh, all this footage in, the, in this box in the closet that survived, as I said in the film, that survived all, all the different places um, I'd moved and had lived. And uh, so a friend was saying, who worked in, in film, said you should preserve it. And analog, you know, really disintegrates, so you should preserve it and digitize it. So um, my wife, who works in film, suggested a friend of hers who had the equipment and said, uh, take it to David and, and he can help you. So I didn't know much uh, about that process. So I was like, David, just take it and then you do it. And he said, no, 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 no. I'll just show you how to do it and, and you can do it. It's easy. So long story short, uh, we watched it together while we were dubbing it. And he said, this is great. You know, these stories are great because he'd ask me, what's going on here? You know, and then I'd tell him. And he said, you should do something with it. And uh, I said, well, why don't you do something with it? And he said, okay, I'd love to. And so that's how it began. And I guess at the time you never had any idea this footage no. would be seen by anyone else. It must no, be no, kind no. of strange sitting in a cinema right. watching it on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. It was just for, you know, to come home from tour and, and show friends and family, you know, look at this or, you know, this is, you know, that kind of stuff. Not for the rest of the world, you know. And how was it working with David? Because I understand that he doesn't come from a from a music background. So. Not at all. No, he um, is he, he's he's you know film film guy, and him he and his husband um, had made films before. But and and they they're you know they love music, but they they had really no idea about um, my scene. You know Seattle and music of the nineties. So it was sort of a lesson for him to like research and see, you know. So he came in with fresh eyes, without any kind of preconceived ideas of, of um, the people involved or the music or, or you know, um, you know. Of course, he'd heard of Nirvana, but so it was great to give him this footage and have him create the story without any ideas previously and trust him because he's a friend and he would take good care of my story and not exploit it. Do you find that, obviously it's been a while since the whole kind of celebrity skin stuff happened and, and now kind of looking back, do you feel that you've um, kind of made peace with that and that you can look back kind of fondly on your time yeah, with the band? Yeah, totally, totally. Like the, from then being, we were younger, I was younger, you know, and and to, to have grown and, and discovered more, as, as I talked about in the film, like the more of me rather than just me being the drummer of whole, um, to look back on, look at that part of my life as, you know, a great experience and uh, um, to to not, not have any sort of resentments around any of the drama, you know. Well, in the making of looking at the footage every day, it was started in 2007 and it was sort of a summer of looking through footage. It was like 40 hours. And it would take me back. I would go to David's house every day, and it would take me right back to those, those, that time. And it was kind of mind blowing to go back in time and then come back, you know, back to reality every day. And and to to you know, some moments were stressful, and I'd go walk away being stressed out, and then kind of have to backtrack and find out, oh, it's because of this, or you know, some of it is, uh, is you know, crazy, and then others are, wow, I'm amazed, look at all those people, that's crazy, you know? There were some great shows, I mean, just moments within, like, in the middle of, like, Kentucky, you know? Not, you know, where, where we're playing the show and it just, the, the moment is um, musically amazing and there's uh, just, you know, there's moments like that in the middle of nowhere where just magically some kind of great musical moment happens, you know, that. And um, then, of course, playing places like Radio City Music Hall, you know, and, and, and having the moment to step on a stage that some great people have played on and feel that sort of, um, you know, excitement of that. Um, yeah, stuff like that.
through the process of making the film, um, got back in touch with Eric, who lives in Los Angeles, and I see him a bit. Um, and he just wrote a book, so we're combining the film and the book and uh, doing a show um, in Melissa's town that she lives in. She has a, a place called the Basilica, and it's she brings artists and musicians, so we're doing a show there. And um, yeah, and I speak to Melissa now, and then she just had a baby as well. So, um, and then I've always kept in touch with Courtney, you know, through emails and, you know, so, yeah, so I still speak to everybody, but not all at once, just individually. <laughs>